Hello my pills and bats, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sheena Perrell, and I'm an author and crafter in the Pacific Northwest. Below you'll find links to my novels, knitting and crochet patterns, my shop, as well as timestamps for this video. This is recording 2.0 of this video, so we're going on the fly to make sure it gets done on time. Please excuse any background noise, we are still in the middle of a heat wave, though it has been downgraded from dangerous to just obnoxious. The weekend after this video goes live, I'm hoping to go down to the coronation event for our SCA Kingdom. I've never been to an event that big before, so I thought I would show you part of my kit and what I bring with me to events. I'm still new to the SCA and we don't have the resources or inclination really for camping, so this is just for single day events. To start with, we have my pockets. I love my pockets. They are huge and they hold all of my modern stuff that I want to hide, like my wallet, medication, earplugs, tissues, and an extra handkerchief. Anything that would normally go into my purse, I can fit in my pockets. On my apron, I also have this pouch and it helps hold the stuff that I need accessible, like my phone or a water bottle. I also usually keep a handkerchief and a fan in here because I'm heat sensitive and kind of messy and I have seasonal allergies. These are accurate to the 1500s. They're actually from my Victorian kit from when I did living history for a museum. So in case that looked nonsensical to you, what I've done is originally this pouch had attempts at lacing holes in it or like buttonholes, hand done buttonholes. Those did not turn out well. They were way too small. I couldn't make them bigger without damaging the fabric. So what I did is I just sewed those shut, covered them up with shank buttons. Yes, these are probably from the 1980s. They are not period at all, but they fit with the aesthetic of the outfit. So I'm gonna go with it. Also it's the Society for Creative Anachronism, not the Society for Historical Accuracy. So, then I took a piece of leather lacing, and this is too thin for me to punch sewing holes in it or stitching holes, but it's all, I also don't want it to just pull out of the stitches if I sew around it and couch it down. So what I did in the back, this part's not going to show, I tied a knot right there, and then I stitched above and below that knot to hold it in place. And then we come around here and this will close just like a file folder, which I can't do with one hand, but it just wraps in a figure eight around those buttons. My lacing is still kind of stiff from being the packaging um, and it'll work better once it is under tension. Um, so there's a nice big space there. And then to secure it, like I said, this works better when it's under tension. To secure it, I can just take this tail and wrap it around the middle of the figure eight, and that'll help hold it in place. But this, again, it needs gravity and a little bit of tension on it to work. And when it's just laying flat, empty like this, it's not great. Um, and if it decides it's not gonna stay shut when I'm wearing it, if it's not full, all I have to do is take this tail and tuck it up in the pouch and it's out of the way. So that is one item fixed slash finished. Okay, project number two is this quiver. I am not the one who made it and it is currently inside out. Um, this is fabric and what I'm going to do is we have some scrap leather. This actually came from a leather coat that we got from the thrift store. And I'm just going to affix the leather over the bottom on the inside. Um, I'm probably going to mostly be using glue just because this is a tight space to be working in and I can't even get my hand all the way down here to sew it. So I'm just going to glue that in place, turn it right side out, and then I have a couple other pieces of scrap leather here to make a loop to attach it to a belt so that way I can use it when I'm shooting and I think at some point I am also going to make a shoulder strap for it because I used to shoot with a back strap quiver um, 
so I need to find the belt real quick and measure it. All this is is just the hem from that piece of leather, same jacket, and then this is just a little piece of scrap. Um, I might want to reinforce this a little bit. It seems pretty sturdy, but it is a very, very thin leather, so I might reinforce it just a little bit. This is glued down now. Did I just use nail glue or super glue? Yes, because it doesn't mean to hold it in place. It just needs to hold it still long enough for me to turn it right side out. Um, did I also almost glue my thumbs together? Also, yes. Okay, and there we go. I added a little bit of blanket stitching to the edge with some embroidery floss. It's brown but it it's close enough to the gold used in these fleur de lis um, and i think from a distance no one's really going to notice um, but i just put that in to kind of help keep the edges intact keep them from tearing or stretching or anything most of the weight of the quiver is actually going to be on this interior piece that's just kind of floating i might tack that down later at some point but the other reason that that is there is because the back side of this leather is suede and it just sticks to the uh, it sticks to the belt and makes it hard to get on. So I'm hoping that that little piece right there that's a little bit smoother will help things glide a little bit better. Okay, on to the next one. My last fix slash repair project for this video is this fan. Um, this is just a cheap wood fan that I picked up somewhere because I'm heat sensitive and I always need a fan. As you can see, the clear thread that laces through it has broken in the middle. This was originally part of my Victorian kit. You can see it still has a little steampunk charm on it from my steampunk symposium days. I miss symposium. I want to go back so bad, but it's on the other side of the country now. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of embroidery floss to match my blue dress. So I think what I'm going to do is just take some embroidery floss, <clears throat> or if I have it, maybe some crochet thread here that matches my blue dress and just go back through all of these spaces. Most of the clear thread is intact except for this middle portion, but I also don't trust clear thread. So let's upgrade this a little bit and I might even add some decorative stitching down here too.
Okay, all fixed. There's no more gap. I'm just going to put a little tiny dab of super glue um, right here and right here on the outsides of the fan. I don't want it to interfere with the motion. It doesn't fold up quite as smoothly or as thin as it did with just the plastic thread, but I'm okay with that. I did want to add another row of um, embroidery stitches to it, maybe do something else decorative, but I found that that interfered with the ability to open and close the fan, so we'll stick with just one, and hopefully this holds up pretty, pretty well. So now that we have made a mess of everything, taking things out of my basket to fix and repair and finish up, Let's put everything back together and I will show you what I carry in my big basket. So I apologize, I'm currently missing the piece of my tripod that would let me use my tripod with my phone. So we're going to have to have the slightly wobbly angle of me holding it in my hand. So I got this basket from the thrift store. This loop was broken when I got it, so I just wove a new one using the same type of leather lacing that I used on the pouch. This is just red. It's something that I had in my stash. I love picnic baskets. You will pry my picnic basket collection from my cold dead hands. In the bottom here, we just have some loose safety pins because you always need safety pins. Also, um, for some reason, this is a key to my first car, which we have not owned in years. Um, I don't know why it's here. These keys just kind of pop up randomly and I don't know where they come from. I kind of think of them as good luck charms. So first let's get my embroidery kit back in here. This is just a container that I think I thrifted this and it has all of my embroidery threads in here. Well, not all of them but it has the ones that I use the most in here. And then it also has a container of embroidery needles. And next to that, I'm gonna go ahead, well, I'll add that later. Um, next we have, this is my writing kit. I am not in Scribble. I just really like fancy pens. This was, was given to me. I don't have an actual quill. I'm used to using steel nibs. Um, eventually I might go down that path, but I like this one. It's fun. Um, so I keep it in here to use. Uh, actually, let's move you. Yeah. This is like playing with a jigsaw puzzle sometimes. Okay. Um... Next up, we have my SCA notebook. Yes, this is an outdated planner. Yes, it is very modern, not at all historical, but that's fine because it was empty and not used and I needed a notebook and I like Sarah's scribbles. So here we are and I haven't done very much in here, but I just put in like notes of things that I want to make, stuff about my character. Um, I've sketched out some pattern pieces in here. And that's what this notebook is for. I'm also keeping my large embroidery hoop in here for right now. This is mostly just because I don't have another place to put it at the moment. And I do have an embroidery piece, well, multiple embroidery pieces that are going in here. And even if they are modern, I'm kind of keeping them all together just so I'm not hunting for them later. And this is my sewing kit that I take with me to events. And this has like needle thread. Um, I have a seam ripper in there. There's some trims that I'm using. And then these are like small pieces of projects, like shoulder straps, lacing, that kind of thing. Also additional lacing. This is just some uh, slip knotted braid that I made. Um, I was mainly trying to use up some scraps, but it is also good to use as cording. Okay. 
my basket or my little box of sewing pins. Um, I also keep a tape measure in here because you never know when you're going to need one. Normally this lives inside this container, but I just don't have room for it right now. Next we have all of my current sewing projects. So I'm just going to put those in there, fill up some of the extra space. These are trims that are going to go with the black uh, Catherine de Medici gown that I'm working on. Um, this is actually, I need to move that somewhere else. That needs to go with my archery kit. That shouldn't be in there anymore now that it's fixed. I have a little bit of largesse that I have gotten from some recent events. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those in there. My fan, I'm going to go ahead and tuck into my apron pouch. And then what's left here is all costume bits. So when I made this costume last year, it was not intended to be like a specific era. It was just kind of general historical sort of like late 14 to early 1500s ish. And that's fine. I do have plans to make some more dedicated and specific projects later on. But for now, this is fine. I like it. It's very comfortable. And then the last thing that I keep in here are business cards, which these are a mess. I need to get a little pouch for those. This is part of the sewing stuff. I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a cosmetic bag to put these in, and then we will be all set. So this is the basket I normally carry with me for longer all-day events. This one will have like water, snacks, etc. in it. Um, usually a knitting project. And then I'll just line the inside of the basket with a piece of scrap fabric. I've used a pillowcase before, actually. This one right here. I'll just put that in there and that way if there's anything modern, like a water bottle or a bag of chips in here, I can just cover it up and no one is the wiser. I like using pillowcases just because you not only get, like you can cover things with it and line the bag, but if you really want to hide something, you can stick something inside it. Or if you're afraid of like your water bottle leaking or something, you can slide a piece of plastic or something in here to line the bottom of the basket and that'll also help reinforce it. This basket doesn't need that. Um, it does need a few small repairs because I did thrift it. But it's in pretty good shape and I love the feet. We do have a bigger kit for our family that is intended for like big all day events where we're bringing our own food. It's something that we can take to overnight trips, not that we have gone on any. And that includes things like a small cooler, a picnic blanket, our table settings. Um, because in the SDA, you usually have to bring your own like plate, cup, etc. They have some disposable ones there usually, but it's recommended that you bring your own and it also adds to the atmosphere. I'm not showing you that one right now just because I don't have a big enough area to set it up and lay everything out. And also the basket that we got for that, it's a big sort of, it looks like a wicker trunk. We got it from Ikea and it's starting to have some structural issues. So I need to fix that and repair it and I'll probably do that in a separate video. But I hope that you enjoyed everything that I showed you today from the craft projects to just a little look at our kit. Um, in my next creatively anachronistic video, I'm going to talk about sensory issues, um, ADHD, and historical costuming, and give you some background into why I carry some of the things that I do 
and also what I recommend for people with sensory sensitivities who want to get into historical costuming but are intimidated by things like layers and corsets and things like that. So until next time, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you again next week. Ciao!